Did we just have a creative? Uh, yeah. Hey, everybody. It's Eric and Roy. And this is a, another Hatchet Cast. We were doing a Barrel and Brains episode, and today we're talking about helmets. Uh, so if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. It helps us out. Screw the algorithm. We're trying to beat it. They can't silence all of us. So if you do that, you're helping uh, combat that. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. So helmets. How often do we get asked about helmets? We get asked a lot, uh, quite often. One of the big questions we get is brand. Ballistic yeah. or vice versa. Ballistic versus bump. What should I go with? Mm. Um, so like what? at the end of the day, what should I be looking for? Well, let's, let's just start off with the two two types, ballistic and bump, all right? So bump is obviously a plastic helmet, and the reason it's called a bump helmet is it is not meant to protect you from any type of bullets, fragmentation, combat type of effect. It is a piece of plastic or carbon fiber for the more expensive bump helmets to protect you from bumps, scrapes, and bruises. So um, getting in and out of vehicles, uh, if you're a jumper and you jump, uh, dive scenes, cave divers, they run them. All right, uh, military, there's all kinds of applications for bump helmets. Holding my night vision, and it's super light. That's a good application for it. Yeah, why should I be looking for a helmet? Uh, so if you ever get into the world of night vision, you got to have something to hold the night vision on your head. So I think the biggest thing is making sure that you have a good brand. Now, the key is, is to figure out if I'm going to hold night vision on my head, should I go ballistic or should I go bump? Well, a ballistic helmet is usually made out of Kevlar. Um, there's all different types of brands and cuts and sizes, um, but it is meant to stop bullets. It's meant to stop frag. Um, and by the bullets, it's meant to stop as nine mil. So like pistol caliber, um, it will not stop rifle rounds. Now, there are some helmets that are really good ballistically that can actually deflect. Um, I've actually heard of stories and know guys who've gotten shot in the head uh, on deployments and stuff like that, and it actually deflected off their round, or it wasn't a direct impact, and it came in at an angle, and that ballistic helmet was able to deflect that round. So it is a piece of armor, um, and, it, and it, an expensive piece of armor as well. So as far as like what you should buy, it's all dependent on your budget and also your criteria. Like what are you trying to do? What are, what's, what are you trying to achieve? Um, what did you think about when you, because you started off with a Yeah, so a uh, bump helmet, um, Team Wendy bump helmet. Uh, it was one of my one of my first besides just, uh, I forgot, you gave me something. I don't even remember what it was. Um, uh, it was an ops core? No, it wasn't an ops core. It was something else. I can't remember. Anyways, it was, it was very primitive. So, oh, but, probably like a military ACH, yeah, like probably. an old school, <laughs> an old school army helmet. Yeah, so it was... Uh, I mean, it obviously did the job. Yeah. It held a PBS-14 on the front of it, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, it was an ACH. Yeah. That was what it was. Yeah. I, I, I tr couldn't remember what it was. Yeah. So, it it, it definitely held the PBS-14 on the front, uh, but then I ended up picking up a set of RNVGs. Yeah. And when I did that, um, started looking for different helmets. And then, honestly, due to budget was my first reasoning behind going with this because it was good value for for what you get out of it. Yeah. Um, most everyone that I spoke to when I was shopping said, hey, the Team Wendy's are extremely comfortable. Mm. Um, for me, that was one of the big things I was trying to actually end goal. At that particular time, I wasn't necessarily, didn't have the budget for a ballistic helmet, so I didn't go that direction. I needed something to hold my nods, and I needed something that was going to protect my helmet from if I was in and out of vehicles, yeah. in and out of UTVs, hog hunting. We run UTVs quite often. So in and out of those things all the time, and I needed something to hold my nods. Um, and that's basically what I ended up with. I chose Team Wendy based off of recommendation yeah. by a lot of guys, uh, and it has been nothing but phenomenal yeah i've actually had no no issues with it whatsoever for the exception of coming up with some different types of accessories to mount stuff on it whenever i need to right. maybe may a little more difficult than what it would be for an op score right um now obviously i can just velcro stuff duct tape it whatever 200 mile an hour tape on it but very very comfortable i love the padding and i really love the ratcheting system that they have on the back i can really fine tune it it's very tactile uh easy to get in and out of uh unclips easy just a very, very comfortable helmet. So yeah. I'm very happy with it. Uh, for me, I come from a motorcycle background and a BMX background. Um, so I know all about wearing a helmet for long periods of time. And man, having something that is digging into your skull mm. is you're not gonna think about <laughs> the inset of what the what what the mission may be or what your goal is, what the uh, the objective is that you're right. trying to. Uh, if you're just taking a class and you're trying to learn, yeah. if you got something that's digging into the side of your head in the front of your temple up here, yeah. or right here on the back, 
you're going to be miserable the entire time and you're not gonna you're not gonna think about anything else yeah it's just gonna be if you're in class and you're uncomfortable you're going to retain zero knowledge because you're just thinking about when can I take this thing off it's mm -hmm. literally torching my skull and and that's the that's a big thing for me as well like comfort was number one like if I was looking for a helmet I mean you know back in military guys were taking ACHs and replacing the pads and trying to figure out ways to make it more comfortable buying aftermarket pads um, the biggest thing is comfort uh, so that way I can actually focus on the mission and, and what's going on. Now it comes hand in hand, you know, like you got to make sure that it's also fulfilling the job of what the helmet is designed to do, which is create a, um, you want to have the outer shell have space between your skull and that shell. So that, that helmet system, that retention system or padding should create that space. You don't want your, your skull directly, if it has an impact, translating that energy directly into your skull. You want that those pads and that retention system to absorb that a lot of that shock and that impact. So that way you're not going to have an, a head injury. Um, I know guys that, you know, in Afghanistan or in deployments who you've gotten an IEDs or frag and it, and it has really jacked them up. Um, if they didn't have that cushioning or that space, they probably would have died from just internal bleeding of yeah. the brain. So like you really got to make sure that you don't also go too much into comfort where you're sacrificing the safety and the purpose of what the helmet's designed yeah. to do. Yeah. You need a, the fitment is, is even with a bump helmet. I mean, obviously a bump helmet is designed just like a bicycle helmet or anything like that. Right. It's designed to protect your head. It's from, from bumps, from, mm -hmm. from hitting your head. Um, coming once again, coming from the motorcycle background and running BMX and motocross and everything, uh, very well aware of what it feels like to hit my head Yeah. quite often and very well aware of what it feels like to to what a good helmet will do for you right. and looking for when it when it comes to fitment if you have hot spots and stuff like that yeah. like if you put a helmet on and you're having to wrench it down super super tight because if you listen when you ratchet this down if you have to go to it's very minimal like all the way down yeah then you get might want to yeah, get a get different size. size yeah same thing goes if you are as loose as it's supposed to be and it's super tight and it's super tight then you need a bump up. Um, and I, honestly, if you guys, if, if you don't have a friend or something like that, that has one that you can borrow one, if you're not taking a class where you have, you know, instructors or, you know, like ourselves where we have rental units uh, provided by Advanced Night Vision, um, try to find a local shop. Find, try to find a local guy. Uh, yeah. We use uh, Chris down in Advanced Night Vision for you guys that are here in Florida or if you're not in Florida, uh, hit Chris up. But uh, go down there to a shop, put a helmet on, see what it feels like. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is just try to find that group of guys that ha that ha trains and see if you can find one, maybe an old army buddy or a vet. Um, most of the time, I feel like the helmet companies would be pretty decent. I, I'm not speaking for them, but I'm sure if you had a size that was wrong, uh, there's a possibility maybe you could yeah. return it. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, but I'm hoping that would be the case. I don't case. know. I've seen a lot of helmets up for sale on Facebook Marketplace before. Where okay, guys yeah, are, yeah. Guys yeah. are like, hey, I bought the wrong size, size yeah <laughs> okay so. yeah touche so don't take that advice yeah. um and, and and there are companies guys that the if you don't already have a helmet and you haven't had the opportunity uh certain brands run a little smaller right than others yeah so just because you normally wear a small medium or something like that or you wear a seven and a quarter or seven and a half ball cap or something like that uh don't necessarily use that measurement to 100 percent to right. your to your rule as far as like what i'm gonna buy yeah um uh, put it on. Yeah. Yeah. If you can't put it on, at least refer to the manufacturer sizing chart that they have on their website about how to size your head for their helmets. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, sizing is a big thing and that goes hand in hand with comfort. You know, like if you got the wrong helmet for the, your head, like it's definitely going to be a lot more uncomfortable. Speaking of comfort, um, and the, at the end of the day, what these things, what we, what we use them most for is, is mounting nods on um, our night vision. What, what do you look for as far as setup to get this thing? Obviously, I just attach this to the front. Right. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing I'm looking for is a counterweight. And and there's a lot of, af so many, the great thing about today is there's so many options. There's so many great companies out there making super good products. And so you have tons of options. It's a great time to be a consumer. And so as far as counterweights, um, I actually made my own. And the way that I made that, I just had some washers, some big, actually nuts and washers that I got from Lowe's. And I actually duct taped them together and then put Velcro on the actual outer side of that shell and created my own counterweight um, to balance exactly the weight of my night vision. The back here is also a battery pack that I used 
to power my night vision. I don't utilize the battery pack to be my counterweight because it's just too light and doesn't match. So you, the key is your counterweight needs to exactly counter the weight of your night vision to actually feel the effect of a balanced helmet. And if your helmet's balanced, it doesn't matter how heavy this is, it actually will almost feel like light because you're not worried about that front heaviness or that back heaviness. The, the funny thing is, is actually back in the day, we had, um, for those who know, we had BNVDs, uh, and they were real big night vision goggles, probably about the same, a little bit heavier than RNVGs. And uh, what we would do is the uh, embitter battery, we would put Velcro on it, so the radio battery, and it was the same weight as the BNVD. So we would smack that on the back of our helmets, and we had ACHs back then, and it was just like, it would perfectly counter that out. So I had a spare battery for my radio, and I had my my counterweight, you know, for my not my night vision. So that was pretty cool. Um, understand the more stuff you add to the helmet, the heavier it's going to get. But there's sometimes there's things where you can't get away from that. So that's why finding those ballistic helmets specifically that are lighter. So that way, when you add that weight, it's not going to be 10 pounds. Yeah. Uh, uh, like Eric said, he obviously made his. This happens to be a purchase one. This is basically nothing more than like a uh, lead shot, like you would use for diving or yeah, something yeah. Like, like, like a small lead pack. Mm -hmm. And then a pouch, easy enough to buy. Um, you, I kind of like the idea of making your own, just for the fact of because you can fine tune it right to your to your system and to your setup. Uh, just like Eric has uh, some nuts inside his, you can take some lead shot, whatever it is, run by Walmart, pick up some uh, pick up some fishing. Maybe I'll do a tutorial like, on yeah, that. Yeah, making, making your own weight counterweight yeah, or something yeah. like that. You can kind of really fine tune it out to the system that you're running. And obviously, you can always take a little bit out. We we end up flopping between um, dual tubes and PVS-14s right. quite right. often. We, we, don't, we don't shy away from the PVS-14. We mm -hmm. actually run it very often. And having needing that ability to change your counterweight yeah. kind of on the fly helps yep. out a lot. So. No, hundred percent, and that's that's something where like if you know if you're running, if you have the funds to do a ballistic, and then you're like, you know what, I kind of want something a little bit lighter. That's where the bump really comes into play. Um, you know, for 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 us, especially in like the military, uh, you know, when you're jumping, it's just so much nicer just to grab this because the criteria you got to have a helmet, and if you're going to do fast roping or any type of special insertion technique, it's just nicer to have a, a bump helmet. Big thing is if I'm going on long walks, like I'm going through the woods on a recce and I'm wearing a rucksack, I am not wearing this thing. Like I'm trying to go as light as possible, just the bare minimum to be able to hold my night vision on my head. Um, there's even options where you have, we call them skull crushers. This is a cry precision nightcap and it literally is just a piece of fabric for holding your night vision. It even has some Velcro on the back for your battery pack and a counterweight. So this is an option. You look like a total nerd when you wear this thing, yep. but it is it is an option if you don't want to go the helmet route. So um, as far as holding night vision, there's tons of different options out there, but the easiest, most general purpose way, I think, is having a helmet to do that. Yeah, and I, I mean, obviously, if you have the budget for it, I think uh, when it comes to choosing a helmet, I think you should have a bump and a ballistic, yeah. personally. I started with a bump helmet, and then now I have a ballistic, and I yeah. have a few helmets. Uh, so I, I we have a few PBS for or, um Team Windy bump helmets. We've got a, quite a few of those, and we've right. got some ballistic helmets. So, I mean, I think ideally, just like what Eric said, based off of what you're doing, right? I'm telling you, if I'm going on a hog hunt, the, ho the hogs are not shooting back at me. Bump. So I'm running <laughs> bump all night, uh, and that's that's what I end up using mine for quite often. What about something like right now? Like, obviously, we can see some cables right. just kind of right. flopping around yeah. here. Uh, this is a helmet that needs to be kind of reconfigured a little bit. Yeah, needs a little bit of help. When yeah, it comes we'll do to, some configuration uh, here. Need some cable management yeah. help. Um, so what 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 are some? Obviously, I know they make covers, like yeah. uh, basically nothing more than a helmet condom. Yep. Um, like a mesh cover, right? That you can that will help with some of that cable management. Yeah. But what are some other things that you can kind of do? So I mean, it, it it all depends. I mean, the first question I should ask is is am I going to wear my ear pro on my helmet? So if you're not going to wear that, you can wear it underneath, and you can actually get the the you know work the head the chin strap around your your headset yeah. um the one thing that i found by doing that one it slims everything down and two allows me to take my helmet off and have my headset on so that's the pro the con is eventually that strap that goes and holds your headset on there when you're having this thing on for a prolonged time it's pushing down on your ears which is then pushing down on the head strap and that ends up causing a headache. You get a hot spot right there on top of your head. So understand there everything has a pro and a con. 
Um, I like keeping my bump helmet slick just because it's a little bit lighter. I can pop the, I can do a John Wayne where I pop the chin strap and just let this thing sit and then have my, my ear pro underneath. Most time I'm also, if I'm wearing this, I'm usually not wearing muffs. I'm usually yeah, wearing some sort of like in the like ear. Like earbud in yep. the ear. Uh, exactly. Like, uh, like the walkers that you kind of, little Bluetooth ones that you exactly. plug in the ear or something yep. like that. And so, so yeah. like, I, I was use, just going to mention that. Like yeah. that's, that's one of my favorite ways to wear it is to, to grab this. Yep. Just like this. Just like that. Just like that. Yeah. Throw it on. Throw some, yep. throw some like earbud style in yeah. the ear, ear protection in. Um, preferably, I like some Bluetooth that mm -hmm. we actually still have a little bit of communication back yep. and forth. Yep. Uh, whoop. Hey. Hey there. Oh, there. there. Hey. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, so very, very lightweight. Yeah. Why don't you start to take everything off of it. Now, if you are going to run ear, ear sets, if you are going to run a headset on on your, uh, your bump helmet, I actually do prefer the type of headset that is the ops core mount that allows me to, or excuse me the uh peltor mount which allows me to pop this off so what that does is i can actually let this float off my ear and let it breathe because if i'm walking through the woods i'm wearing a ruck i don't want to have muffs covering my ears the whole time as i'm walking because i'm just sweating my face off so being able to pop that headset off of my ear and just let it breathe but still be able to hear comms is really nice now, if I'm wearing, for example, like on this, I'm running the the uh, the RAC from Opscore, and it it kind of swims out to the side. I have to have these all the way in or all the way out. There is no pop off without looking like Mickey Mouse. So I'm running the uh, um, AXL uh, adapters to be able to run the Peltor mounts to the actual Opscore RAC link. But if I'm wearing a ballistic helmet. It's like I've got all my protection on. I'm wearing hearing protection all the way. I'm not really popping that thing off. Um, so those types of consideration, if you are going to wear headsets on your helmet, there's some things to think about. Um, I may not want to have something, if especially I'm wearing something that I want to be able to let breathe and, and be a little bit more lightweight, have a system that is a lot more compacted and is yeah, always these, on. These are great. They look super cool. Uh, everyone loves the way these look. Yeah. Especially when they're popped out. Yeah. But they definitely get in the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially when walking through the woods. Yeah. So, I mean, it, the, the good thing about these is it does open up that rail space because yeah. I do run cameras Correct. on the side. So that allows me to run that helmet camera. And so this is a, a good option for me. But like I said, I don't run that on the bump. So if you if you have another helmet and you're able to afford that or save up for it, it gives you the options. Some very minimal, at a very bare minimum things that I have on a helmet are, especially if you're gonna start working night vision. Guys, if you take our night vision courses, we're walking how many miles? Alpha, we generally put in three miles. About three miles through yeah. the woods. So like, understand like, in We're, the thick of Florida. In the thick, thick. In the swamp. Thick. In the swamp? In the swamp. In the swamps. <laughs> it's super swamp. Let me tell you what. You know sweaty. What? You'll, you'll get sweaty. You'll get sweaty, and then you'll get <laughs> swampy downstairs. <laughs> swamp, swamp. Swampy. Swamp crotch. <laughs> uh, so at a very minimum, I will have, obviously, my my rhino mount or my Wilcox mount for holding my night vision, but I'll also have some form of strobe or like an IR marking device. So that way other people who have night vision can see me um, specifically for training, or it also goes over. So I can actually have where it stays green. Um, I will also make sure I have Velcro. So if I don't have this, I can at least Velcro a chem stick or somehow tape it to my helmet to be able to be able to have somebody identify me, you know, for safety. So yeah, go ahead. So I was gonna say back to kind of like uh, when I, my original question uh, before we went on our little bit of rant there as far as cable management. Yeah. Um, you don't have the the helmet condom on. Yeah. You no. basically just have like Velcro and 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 patches and stuff like that. Right. To kind of hide your cables in. Yes. So very simple. Didn't really overthink it here. No. So I mean, for these cables specifically, this is my battery pack cable. So I have a lot of patches and I actually have duct tape. So what I'll do is I'll take Velcro and I'll attach it directly to the helmet. I then take a piece of hook Velcro and put duct tape on the back of the sticky part. And now that becomes part of my cable management. For my actual Ear Pro uh, cable, I actually wired that through on the inside of my helmet, underneath the padding on the inside, so it's not sticking out. Um, I've seen guys though that have it where it's on the outside, and they'll usually just put Velcro over top of it or a flag or somehow tape and retain it to the helmet. At the end of the day, it's creativity. It's, like, yes, however you it doesn't. It. It's not meant to be complicated. Yeah, like uh, you don't have to blow your budget on all kinds of different accessories and no. stuff like that. I mean, like Eric was saying, is if I need to throw a light on the side of it or I need to throw some chems, I don't have to have a special holder to throw 
uh, I don't have a chem here, um, but uh, I don't have to have something to throw a chem right. in here like this that's on the back of this. No, um, you could literally take duct tape yeah, and duct tape it to your helmet. It doesn't, so, doesn't have to be overcomplicated. No, and that's the other thing is like with this, just be creative. The biggest thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to minimize snag hazard when it, specifically with my cables. I don't want to have a big cable loop and then all of a sudden I'm walking through the woods and a branch grabs that cable and starts whip, ripping my night vision off or tearing my headset back. So that's the biggest thing is I'm trying to slim this down. A helmet cover is a great option. Um, I just don't like them. So, I mean, that's personal preference at the end of the day. Eric is a Picasso. So <laughs> yeah, if I love to paint everything. If there is a blank canvas, he's going to paint it. So, <laughs> yeah, he's like this. Uh, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. This was a brand new helmet and, and it obviously it got, painted. It, it got painted. It yeah. ended up with a uh, paint job. Yeah. But I, I honestly talk once, once again, guys, don't, I mean, this is just so simple. Yeah. Like as far as like this, one of this ride, one of these ride around in my truck like this with yeah. my Rhino mount on it. So nice. With a PVS 14. So nice. And just super, super simple. I throw some earbuds in, mm -hmm. see a pig jump out of my truck, roll out. Yeah. Blast it. Blast it. <laughs> <laughs> with nine mil at 30 yards. Uh, so a couple other accessories and some, some shout outs. So specifically as far as strobes, if you're going to get an IR strobe, um, uh, we work a lot with the the folks over or in with Core Survival and have a good relationship with them. So that's why uh, these have been proven to work really, really well. They're ruggedized, they're waterproof. Um, really, really good company. But at the end of the day, there's tons of other good strobe companies out there. Um, even some of the old school military strobes, they work perfectly fine. So if you can find one at a surplus store, as long as you get one, it's water resistant, waterproof, and it'll work every time. Um, just have some form of strobe. The other thing obviously is our counterweight. And then if you have any patches, the patches are good for cable management. Uh, and then last but not least, I will have a light of some sort. This is just a red lens, so I don't have to wear a red lens around my neck. I can just wear a red lens on my helmet so I can read stuff and not expose my position. Um, I've also seen guys that will put like the big giant white lights to kind of do umbrella lighting. So if they walk into a room, they turn that on, you know, they flip their night vision up and they can umbrella light the entire room. It's like someone turned the lights on. Um, yeah, so depending on what you're doing and your, and your mission set or your objective or what your goals are is going to determine how much you set this thing up. Um, so yeah. As far as the purpose of helmets, like people ask, why should I buy a ballistic helmet? Um, well, I think in reality, like you got to ask yourself a hard question, and that's let's let's be real for a second. Why are we buying any of this stuff? Yeah. Like, why are we wearing night vision, for example? And I'm assuming it's probably not just for home defense. Like, at the end of the day, we're all trying to be prepared citizens, and if I'm going to be a prepared citizen, having equipment that can save my life is going to be important. You know, stuff like this will make things convenient, but when you buy armor, you do not want to go cheap. You don't want to skimp out. So kind of looking at some quality, specifically for ballistic helmets. If you buy a bump helmet, you can get away with it. Honestly, like we stick the old ProTech helmets like you would get for like football or hockey and they would cut the ears off of them and drill a night vision mount onto this plastic helmet and run that. Like that's the old school way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And so running a ballistic helmet though, I have some real strong characteristics that I'm looking for to find quality because it is a life-saving device. So I have to be vigilant in, in checking that and making sure I'm buying quality. I'll tell you right now, when it comes to buying armor, the cheaper something is, the more research you're really gonna have to do into that company to see how legit they are. Um, for me, I'm looking one, obviously outside of the weight, but also like I'm looking at the shine of the, the finish of the paint. Sometimes like those finishes will be different. I'm also looking at the connection of the rail, if it has any accessories, does that kind of form exactly to the helmet? Um, or does it kind of look like it's a copycat of a very famous brand? Um, the other thing I'm going to look for is other YouTube reviews or see if it's an actual NIJ certified rating. Does it have an actual rating from the government or from an actual federal entity saying this is approved for combat by U.S. troops or NATO troops or whatever? Um, we're seeing in Ukraine, there's like fake ballistic helmets coming out and like guys are literally punching the helmet. That's a ballistic helmet and it caves in. Yeah, so like, it's crazy. Yeah. So you got to understand like buying quality is is super important i would even recommend instead of buying a cheap helmet like that not like a cheap ops core that is a look-alike i would buy an ach from ebay and mm -hmm. run that until you can find a good quality because at least i know that is going to hit the ratings it's going to match the standards that i need to save my life um so some big things just kind of keep an eye out for major manufacturers 
the Team Wendy's, the MTEX, the Ops Cores, uh, Cry Precision Airframe, those big companies that are used all the time, Gentex, by the military, it's been proven. You know, it's already been proven. Uh, similar to the way you purchase firearms or anything like that, if you're getting into that, you want to find something that's proven, right? It's proven to work over and over and over again. And these helmets do that and they have the stories to back it up. Um, so that's a big thing that I'm looking for specifically. And also I'm maintaining this thing. Like I'm not just throwing it in a bag or letting it sit out in the sun. I'm like I'm actually taking care of it. I'm buying, you know, get a helmet bag, mm -hmm. buy a nice bag, a padded yep. bag. Whenever you're done with it, store it. Um, and just take care of your equipment that specifically saves your life. Uh, it's just super important. You're worth, you're worth the investment. So Biggest thing is, if you end up buying this, you got to train with it. Like, yeah, must put it on. You can't just buy it and do nothing with it. Just let it sit there, and convert <laughs> yeah. it where there, put it on, think it looks cool, stuff like that. You definitely got to put some put some time in behind it. Um, learn what fits, what you need to change, how simple you want your setup, or how intense and yeah. how how complex you want your setup to be. So, yeah, I mean, and when you first started getting getting into night vision and also wearing helmets, like, you know how long did it take to kind of actually get trained to using the weight? Like even the weight was just, different. You know? Just, yeah, in general, just yeah. just having that additional weight on top of my neck and my head and walking around and moving around. It took, took quite some time to, to, to get comfortable with that. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, you got you to gotta put it on. You got to wear it. You need to get out. You need to walk with it. Um, I mean, your neighbors might look at you weird, but go for a go walk. They already the do dog. that anyways. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go, yeah. Walk, go walk the dog. Uh, find out where your hot spots are. Find right. out what's uncomfortable. Find if your ear pro is sitting in the right position, you know, on your on your, on your your mounting system. Mm -hmm. Is my yeah. ear pro too far back? Is it too far forward? Am I getting a proper seal? Uh, stuff like that. So all, all that kind of comes into play. Um, what kind of cable management do I have? Do I need, mm. do I, are my cables getting hung up on stuff? Do, right. You know, go for a walk through the woods. Am I catching on branches? There's a lot of things to consider and you really don't know until you, until you put it on, get out and train with it, yeah. put some, put some time in behind it. Um, you know, if you're on a budget, pick up a good bump helmet from a mm -hmm. reputable company, start wearing it learn your setup stuff like that um like i said it earlier i highly recommend i think you should own both yeah i think you should definitely purchase uh, a ballistic helmet uh it's the same reason why you buy body armor same reason why you guys buy chest rigs from us yeah so, uh, I, I think that's actually a perfect actually that's some great advice is starting off with a bump helmet and figuring out how you want that set up and then yeah. er graduating into a ballistic uh that's a great way to save money plan your stuff out, but also get comfortable wearing it and, and putting stuff on it and how you would set that up. Yeah, we'll, um, see, we'll see individuals or people that will go out and they'll, they'll get their nods. They'll, they'll get their nods, they'll go spend a ton of money on it, and then next thing you know, they're, they're out there either with some off-brand helmet or a Chinese or, or, bump or a Chinese <laughs> yeah. bump or something like that because they blew their entire budget Yeah, and, and they really want a ballistic. I mean, go spend a few hundred bucks. Yeah. And just pick up the bump helmet get out there and train with it, start learning how to use it, and get comfortable with it, figure it out. Yeah, so, you definitely um, got to train then, with it. And then, like, that's what I did. I mean, I didn't have a, I didn't start off with a ballistic helmet. Yeah. So um, I, I eventually purchased one, and yeah. now now we have a few helmets. Yeah. We're kind of progressed into this as, as, a, as I've grown as a shooter uh, under night vision, mm -hmm. and becoming more, more and more accustomed with it. So. Yeah, I, I, and it goes back to kind of what we always preach, go train. If you want to train with us, Go check out our website. We have Ghost Fighter Night Vision classes, but at the same time, we have other classes as well. Like if you, we have a Red Dot Pistol class. You know, if you wanted to bring your helmet and do some reps during whenever we're doing our stages and stuff like that, you know, bring your helmet, bring your equipment, bring your gear and train with it. Obviously, learning the skills and having those stepping stones, but on your own when you're at your own range, train with your gear. You know, train with it. Be a prepared citizen and and take ownership of of your training. You're worth the investment. So. Um, definitely go check out the website, go check out, uh, our training schedule. We have a lot of classes this year, all different types, scope carbine, red dot pistol, yep. night vision. Um, but go and invest in yourself cause you are worth the investment. Um, where can they find this as far as our pictures? Uh, what's that thing? It's like a social media place. What MySpace. That's MySpace. it. MySpace. Yeah. MySpace. <laughs> Go check uh, out our Instagram. Yeah, check out our Instagram. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we got I mean, personal opinion. I think we probably got the coolest Instagram account. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, totally not biased with the Instagram page. By the way, it is the best yeah. that we've ever seen. The ever. 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 Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> if you're trying to follow the 2048 theme and that storyline, all those pictures that come out of that, and also update 
training events and things that are upcoming, go check that out, as well as our Spotify. That's where we have our guest-only episodes there, and also all the audio from YouTube will go on Spotify, but also we have our guest-only episodes, like I just said. Long on. story short is you can find us pretty much everywhere. everywhere. Even so. on Rumble. Oh yeah, Rumble? Yeah, we're on Rumble. Oh, are we? Yeah. Dang, go, man. Every video that's on, or actually, every video that was on YouTube, every video is on Rumble, every single one. Pretty awesome. So yeah, yeah. you can pretty much find us anywhere. Um, <laughs> Possibly, maybe even Craigslist. MySpace is definitely sure. Yeah, Craigslist. <laughs> we'll have some Chinese helmets for sale at Craigslist. Cool. All, All right, right, guys. guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. See ya. <laughs> oh, gosh, that was a good one.